So in 1931, he purchased his land. We bought 15 acres right off the bat. And I think we paid $325 an acre. Well, it doesn't sound like much, but it was a lot of money then. This is just the beginning of the Depression year. So what he did, got rid of that farm, bought this farmland, and built a home, big house, a huge house. And that's when I, myself, was a youngster, about 10, about 10 years old, nine, 10 years old. My father hired this, uh, this American carpenter to build us, help build a house. Meantime, we had friends help him do this. He did a lot of detail work and such. And this is one of these days, I hope to be a carpenter myself. I was only 10 years old. So I always met my, I want to be a carpenter. So I kept that in my mind always, all through the years, and just went through. So anything to do with carpenter work, my father let me do it, even though I was a youngster. Then, so anyway, as I grew up on the farm, I went to trade school. That's where I learned to be a carpenter. After EO 9066 was signed, the Yamamichi family was sent to the Pomona Detention Center in Southern California, then to the Heart Mountain War Relocation Authority Camp in Wyoming. It was there that he and his family were given the loyalty questionnaire in early 1943. Yamamichi answered yes, yes to questions 27 and 28, but his father wanted the family to stay together. I never asked my dad why he wanted to go to Lake, because I was saying yes, yes, to leave the camp. I want to go to school. And I was accepted to uh, Miami University in Ohio. And uh, I was ready to go. And dad said, no, he says, you can't go. And it was a big discussion. And uh, my brother wrote to me, he says, well, why don't you go, you know, with your family, with the family, Just keep the family together. I said, okay. so." With his suggestion, that's why I went to Tule Lake. Camp Tule Lake was built in 1933 as a public work relief program, part of the New Deal of President Franklin Roosevelt. The camp was one of several constructed for the Civilian Conservation Corps. From one Roosevelt program hailed as one of the greatest New Deal programs to his signing of EO 9066, the camp was renamed the Tule Lake War Relocation Center and later Tule Lake Segregation Center. Yamamichi was one of thousands of Japanese Americans branded as disloyal in Tule Lake. At Tule Lake, Yamamichi eventually became head of the construction crew. And then he'll come in and talk to us, and you know, like anybody else, we go in and talk to him, you know. And like the jail, the best called me in his office and asked me, hey, Jim, says we've got to build a jail. You know, my stock answer was, you know, Mr. Best, I'd be a damn fool if I build a jail for my own people. He says, well, if you don't do it, somebody else going to do it. So you're up a tree, right? So, so OK. So I built the jail. But you know, those kind of things, I guess it's just uh, being young and and no feisty, what the heck, uh, I'll try anything. So I had about 250 guys working for me at different crews. You know? So I went on all the crews asking, hey, I gotta build this jail. You know, first thing they said, bakatata, you know, who in the hell gonna build a jail for our own people? But finally I got two brothers uh, from Loomis area. They said, okay, we'll do it for you. So they never built a jail, a uh, concrete job, and they're a bunch of farmers, right? We're all, like myself, I didn't have that much experience, but we we'll put our heads together and we built the jail, you know. It's uh, crudely enough, but with the equipment we had, it's amazing we even built the jail. In 1944, Yamamichi received his draft notice. If I remember correctly, in January, of 1944, my draft status was changed to 1A. And then in March, I got a notice for pre-induction physical. And it says if you do not uh, report for physical, you have a fine and they'd be jailed for not reporting and such. But it didn't say how much or anything. There's a penalty. Okay. Uh, 
The reaction is, you know, like I said before, when I was going to grade school, that one of these days I want to vote, be 21. I was 21, so I asked the, the Caucasian workers, this, you know, I'm 21, I like to get the registered to vote and, and be a voter. And they just kind of laughed at me and said, no way, you can get no. Said, How could you vote here? You're, you know, you condition where you can vote, this and that. In the meantime, I get this draft notice. It's here, I can't vote, I can't register, and they want me to join the army now. So I decided oh, then I'm not gonna go. So there's 26 of us, and none of us knew who was who was going. Just some two fellows I knew. Once we got together, two guys I knew, but the rest of them, I didn't know who they were. So we had no chance. That we, they could never say that we got together and made up our mind. And so and then there, I made up my mind that I'm not going to go with the Army. So I just didn't report. Then I got a notice in July to be to report to the front gate to be taken with the marshal to go to Eureka for the court case. And actually, I was exonerated. We had a strong case, and we had a judge that was very understanding. He knew the Korematsu case, the Baish case, uh, who the lady who was the lady who was fighting the case. He wrote in his brief says. They're, they're arguing their case is not completed, but still, this case here is, we're not given the due process of the law, as he said. We're not given due process of the law, so we're not subject to be drafted. The, the, the draft board has no right to draft us. And so we will be returned to Devarare as a free citizen. The Tule Lake draft resistors went before U.S. District Court Judge Lewis E. Goodman. Of all the federal judges who oversaw draft resistant cases from the 10 camps, Goodman was the only one to dismiss the charges, saying, it is shocking to the conscience that an American citizen be confined on the ground of disloyalty, and then while under duress and restraint, be compelled to serve in the armed forces were prosecuted for not yielding to such compulsion. Upon being released from camp, he returned to San Jose and obtained his California contractor's license and made a career in construction. In 1991, after Yamamichi retired, he and his wife, Aiko, participated in a Tule Lake pilgrimage. In 1991, when I first went to, I really cried. Really cried because the tears came out of my eyes. Just, you know, just rolled out. We talked to different people and see different people, and I have to run across. Uh, her name was Hara. Last name was I forgot what her first name was. She married to a Chinese. Name was Wong. When she went to me, Wong, I'm so and so Wong. You know. Oh yeah, they were not blocked. They were one of those very unfortunate people with very little money. You know, you really feel sorry for them. And, and anyway, when I met her, we talked about old times, about Block 27, and about different people we knew, this and that. And she was got tears in her eyes, saying, you know, I just wonder what happened to them, you know. And especially the one that really was struggling. We knew they were struggling. It's a... Uh, it's, uh, this was the only time, that, so then I decided I should be out there and tell my story, tell everybody it was no picnic, I don't care what the hell they say it was. And because at the time, it was mostly all the young generations was running the pilgrimage there, and they don't know, they didn't live it, you know, we lived it. It was his vision and persistence that began and resulted in Tule Lake becoming a National Historic Landmark. He also co-founded the Japanese American Museum of San Jose. My, my, my vision, that's, that's one of the park ranger asked me, so it's, oh, uh, it's, a, it's a pipe dream, but it'll never happen. But anyway, tell me about it. I said, oh, 
I personally would like to see an uh, interpreter center built up Tui Lake and build a hotel up there on top of the hill. And we have such a tremendous amount of natural resources. We have the lava beds, we have the wildlife preserve, we have Captain Jack Stronghold, we have Tui Lake campsite, and we have Crater Lake. We have all these beautiful areas there. They can start make the home here, and we have buses going out all every day to all these sites and have five points of interest to, that they can go around and see and learn of all the different things in uh, the history of the area.